hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. And it's Thursday, and we know what happens on Thursday is an update from the Space Engineers developers, and you're probably wondering what you'll be getting your hands on this week. Well, we've had a number of updates to other blocks that are running into problems, as well as new features being added to others. So let's start by actually looking at the block that was added last week. Now, this is the programmable block, and we ran into a number of little coding errors with it, as well as sort of ways around. The first one was carrier containers. People are able to transfer items between them without actually connecting them up with conveyors and this was actually solved quite simply by stopping that command from working and that command is now out of the game so you have to have everything piped up now moving on from that we have another little fix to the coding problems now first off I'll show you this little loop that we've got set up here what actually happens is these doors are open and put random and the big fear was someone sticking one of these on the side of your ship and hacking into it taking full control by using coding now, I'll show you what happens if something goes wrong in the code in itself. Say someone tries to hack and take over one of the blocks in the code. Now, as you can see here, we'll say yes, and it'll cut it out of the actual code itself. Now, if we return to the programming block, programming block 2, you'll see with access denied, the block will no longer function within that circuit. So that is something to give you a little bit more of a safety or sort of comfort knowing that if that block is access denied it will not be able to be hacked even if we do something like this so if we go back over to the programming block and we actually edit and we check code like so and remember an exit so we resave that and we stop this button for instance stop the code and rerun the program you'll notice we still don't have control over that block on the right that belongs to someone else so we can't just go and stick one of these on the side and have a little bit of a problem but maybe there is other ways around that so the next thing that's been actually modified in this update is the sensor block the sensor block has a new number of features now these features are great for building drones missiles and a whole variety of defensive systems as well so we've got detect owner detect friendly detect neutral and detect enemy now you can just pair these up to build these contraptions so say for instance we want to build a mining ship we detect detect asteroids and we'd also take the direct owner or detect owner option and this would basically allow us to lead this mining drone around turn off this setting when we could and it would just mine away through the asteroid just a useful thing or we could turn it into a missile and we could tell it to detect small ships and large ships and also detect enemy ships so we don't shoot ourselves or friendly and neutral vessels that was a risk before with detection based guided missiles anyway let's give it a little bit of a try so for this test we've actually got Henry off there in the distance and we've got him set to enemy so we're actually going to aim this missile in his general direction and we're actually going to launch it so we're going to press K on this option and we're going to actually start up one of the thrusters and power that towards him so the sensors are on and when it becomes in that 50 meter range of one of the sensors it should detect it and should activate the actual gyroscopes aboard the ship detecting that enemy vessel there we go and it's guiding it towards it and there we go we've got a small little boom and we've got henry's rear tail area taken off by that little explosive now these are more designed for the larger ship but you can see the proof of concept and how they're working with that detection of enemy feature now that's also great because if you decide to set yourself up a little bit of an alarm like this one and you forget the password like i tend to do then you're not going to have your whole ship blow up on you but i'll show you anyhow so we're heading here and if you remember i have got this alarm system in here and as you walk over to this area, this happens. Now, I forgot the password. I think it's something like 2779. Oh, it is. It is. Wow. I've remembered it. Okay. That, that, that's, that's, that's fine. But if you forget your password, then it's not going to blow up. Now, what I'm actually going to do is actually reset this sensor. So instead of detecting players, it's actually going to detect players, yes. And it's going to only detect enemy players. So it'll no longer detect me. So let's actually restart the system by turning this sensor back on. Okay, and let's just test that out for a final time. Walking in, da 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 da. Okay, sensor's not picked. Oh, what? That's not right. Um, uh. Okay, well, I must have set one of the settings incorrect on that one here. Combining detect players with uh, detect owner is, is not how it works. It only works like this. So that is, that's how you blow your ship up by detecting players, because it's going to detect all players. 
and that is how you basically do that. So this also means that the system like this is also a problem. So it means that detect small ships means you can't tell it to detect small ships and only detect enemy ships because it'll detect any sort of small ship, whatever faction. So that means you've got a little bit more of a problem. Now, another feature that's been modified is the ability to actually mod the speed of your ship. So originally 104 was the limit of these smaller ships. Jesus, something exploding over there. But now we can actually accelerate far past that and we can actually reach up to 500 meters a second. We can, give on we can go even further than that, but the problem with going further than that is that it's gonna struggle to render them other asteroids as you're flying through that infinite universe. It's fine here. There's no asteroids around, but as you can see, we're reaching up to that maximum speed. But if you are having like a, a very low sort of performance PC, then you're gonna really struggle to render them asteroids in. But it is really great for traveling long distances within space, maybe between two outposts or two of your positions that you built a far way apart. Just a really exciting way of actually having a look at that. But talking about distance, let's have a look at the view distance settings. Now, one of the other little features I wanted to show you is actually on the Advanced Worlds setting, and it is the view distance. As you can see here, we've got a number of different options. We can have a very low view distance. That's going to be very useful for low-performance machines or maybe even laptops. And then you've got larger and larger view distances until we've got 50 kilometers that has a very big performance hit and i'll show you a little bit of the difference between them right now now this is the maximum setting this is 50 kilometers that you can actually see and you can see asteroids here you can just pick them up in the distance 50 kilometers away and that means your screen is absolutely populated by loads and loads of little asteroid clusters everywhere you go now it's not affecting my pc too heavily but once with the lower end PCs or PCs that won't be able to handle and remember the more you build in the world the more problem it's going to handle with this little starting platform it might be fine but when you get a larger ship going or you get a base the performance is going to drop incredibly let's actually have a look at the lowest view distance and see what we can actually see now this is the actual lowest setting of five kilometers so i'm actually going to fly a little bit away here and we should see the blue ship actually pop out i can't see any asteroids around me at all it's still set on an unlimited world but the five kilometer view distance is really ineffective but on the beneficial sort of side it means that players or people that don't have the most powerful gaming rigs can still play and still enjoy this game so you can see it's going to start to pop out any moment another asteroid's popped in on the left it's popping out slowly the ship's starting to go We've got some fragments of it, and as we go a little bit further away, it'll pop out completely. But still, it's great that they're trying to account for the people that have PCs that are a little less intensive and can't handle the big-end, high-end graphics. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'd like to know what you guys think of this patch. I'll see you next time.